All right, what we got here is an Envision 22-inch uh, LCD. It's uh, from the Vista Air. Belongs to a buddy of mine. And uh, that would be Ultima CJ. Any of y'all have checked out his uh, YouTube channel where he does gaming videos and stuff. But, um, for some reason, it will no longer, the DBI, while it works, the picture is distorted and if you let windows do its thing when it loads the drivers for the monitor instead of being a generic pnp or the driver for the monitor it loads a generic non-pnp and it will never switch above i think it's like 1024 by 768 and this is a 1680 by 1050 panel and if you go into Windows Device Manager and you force it to use the generic PNP driver, it will immediately fail. The display will shut off. And that's it. Now, you can load Linux Mint. I think we tried Linux Mint 18.3 on this panel. And it will load. And it will go into the X Windows environment. And... The display will work, but in the middle of the screen, it'll say frequencies out of range, even though they're not. So I believe the uh, EDID uh, information on this panel, and for those of you who don't know what that is, that is uh, most, actually I think all LC panels have it. And maybe some of the old CRT monitors might have had it, but basically what it does is it reports to um, the video card and to the window into Windows drivers what the capabilities of a monitor are its timings um, maximum resolution and so on and so forth and I believe what's happening is this panel is no longer sending that information so when you go to load a driver it fails and it's possible this screen monitor has a bad EEPROM I'm not 100% totally sure what's going on with it so I pulled the back off of it. There's a couple screws. And we can just pop this down. Let's go ahead and get this off of here without cutting this off. And that's all there is to this. <laughs> Little teeny tiny power pad. The power supply is bigger than the actual. This is the main board. Uh, there's your LVDS cable. This has inboard speakers. Uh, nothing wrong with any of the caps. Caps all look fine. Can't see anything wrong with them. It's a little dirty. I believe uh, this has been exposed to some roach poo. Specifically in here, you can see it all over this volt regulator and stuff. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all this up in here. And I'm going to reseat the cables here. And see... Uh, more than likely, this is the EEPROM on here. I'd have to look it up and see. One of these little chips here, one of these little ICs will be the EEPROM. And if it's bad, it's bad. There's nothing we can do about it. I don't know that I can even source another board for this screen. Um, Envision, the company that makes these panels, is no longer in business. I looked at their website the other day. It's just, a, just an empty website with nothing on it. It's been sitting there for years that way. So He's already purchased a new monitor, so... If we can get it working, yeah. If not, then I don't know. You can get uh, like third-party driver panels if you can figure out what panel is in here. Um, there are companies that make driver models that you can connect to these panels to get them to work again, but it's probably not a good way to go and certainly not cost-effective. All right, so as you can see, we're using a uh, converter. That's DVI to VGA, so get a VGA single. Um, newer cars, like my uh, my friend that owns this monitor, his newer, he's got a 1050 Ti now, and those cars do not have the analog outputs on the DVI port at all anymore. So, if you have a newer monitor, this may not be a as simple a fix for you. But so anyway, as you can see in VGA mode. 
everything is happy honky dory running at our native resolution 1680 by 1050 come over here to device manager and we look at monitors and you can see it installed as a generic PMP which is what it should install it as if it can't tell um, you know if one doesn't have a built-in driver so what it's supposed to do is it probes this monitor for the EDID information which is your timing and resolution and all that stores that in the registry it knows how to time and you know all that all the good stuff so what we did is we come over here to this program from a company called Intech and we run this it's called monitor asset manager and what it'll do is it will probe the EDID information in the monitor and then it'll report back the info so there's your monitor and even though this is an Envision monitor it's actually manufactured by AOC it tells you the week and everything and all that and you can tell we're on analog now in a perfect world we can just copy the uh, we could create a bin file or whatever out of this and if we had the correct uh, software or hardware to do it, we could connect the DVI port and possibly reprogram the uh, EDID information on the EEPROM chip for the DVI side. Unfortunately, I don't have a way of doing that. And I don't really know of any software that can truly do it. I believe there's a DOS program out there that can do it, but I don't even want to get into it. The easiest way to deal with this is to use this program to extract uh, the correct information that we need and that would be this, this is your scan range and hertz and your uh, correct resolution information and all that what modes it can run and then what we did here is we come over here and you go to file and create an INF and then you just tell it to drop it out here on the desktop somewhere. And then you can go ahead and close this program. And there's your monitor INF file. And of course, if you open it up with Notepad, just like any other driver INF, it will have all the information that it needs. As you can see. And then what we'll do is I'll reconnect the DVI port and we'll walk through the steps of loading this driver. Alright, now as you can see we're kind of DVI again. And we're back to our super craptacular resolution. Now what you would normally be able to do if it wasn't for this being 64-bit, I believe if you're running 32-bit you don't have to do this step, but if you go into Device Manager and you see we have our monitor file here, you can right click update driver, browse, pick a driver, tell it you have the disk for it, we'll tell it the desktop, and there's our driver. And this is the driver that the Intech program wrote out for us. As you can see it's an EDID override driver, which is what we want, it's the only way to get around it, and click next. Unfortunately, as you can see it won't work. Windows encountered a problem installing this. The, and you can see here the third party INF does not contain a digital signature information. So, this is not a signed driver from Microsoft. And in the 64 bit versions of Windows, I think starting with either 7 or 8, they enforce driver signatures. But there's a way around this. So, close all this out. And you'll want to go to settings. And we'll go to update and start security. We'll go to recovery mode. And we want to use advanced startup. We want to restart in advanced startup mode. And you want to go to troubleshooting, advanced options, startup settings. And then what this is going to do is it's going to reboot and it's going to bring this menu. This is the way you get into safe mode and crap now instead of the old way when you used to be able to hit F8. But what we want to do is go into disable driver signature enforcement. So reboot. Old Dell Optiplug 
All right, so after the reboot, it'll bring you up to the startup settings page. And you want to choose option seven for disable driver signature enforcement. And then we'll boot. And you can tell this monitor's got some issues on the DVI port. It's sort of a, it's like a sort of a ghosting. And that's kind of all blocky looking. So there's definitely some sort of EEPROM corruption, I do believe. But if you're not running low res DOS mode stuff, it shouldn't really matter. Alright, so we're in, coming back into Windows. Ah, speaking of Earth, we now have a Tesla Roadster floating around Earth. Thanks to the Falcon Heavy launch today. Alright, now that we're back in Windows. And we have driver uh, signature enforcement disabled. We can now come into device manager. And we can come back in, update our driver. Do the have disk, pulling it back at the desktop. Here's our EDID override driver next. And this time, what you want to do is you want to install this driver software anyway. And hey, look. There you go. Now we have our native resolution back. And there's the driver. So what this does is bypasses the monitor's internal EDID information check. And it works. So now if we go to display settings, as you can see, we're running 1680 by 1050. And we're doing that over the DVI connection. So a couple things that caused this, and more than likely, I believe the problem is going to be a power surge or lightning. Um, the interesting thing here is, he, and it could also have been a bad cable, because there was a couple things going on. Uh, we know for a fact he had a bad DVI cable, because periodically, especially on sleep and waking the, his system back up, you would lose the monitor. You'd get the turn on, and the monitor would disconnect. And you could pull the cable, plug it back in, and it would come back up and work. Um, we tested the cable. And sure enough, it was bad. You could literally bend it in certain spots and everything would quit working. So shortly after that, um, he started having graphics problems with his card. He had a, a Radeon 7850. And it started to fail. It ended up, you get garbled up crap all over the screen everywhere. I think it ended up probably being the RAM. Um, solid state or polymer caps on the card, so it wasn't the caps. Um, the fan was working perfectly fine. Um, I even went so far as to pull the heat sink, re replace the paste, and put the fan and everything back on there. Same problem. Wasn't a heat problem. Never was getting hot. The fan would come up and spin when he was playing games or whatever. But And around the time that happened, then his DVI port quit working. So then he was doing uh, the DVI to VGA trick. So he could use the VGA on here to get his resolution and all that. So, But once the card failed, he got a new, I think he got a 1050 Ti. And all the new cards, there's no, <laughs> their DVI ports don't have any analog signals on them at all. It's all digital. So, but there you go. This is a workaround to fix that problem. And uh, hopefully it'll help some of y'all if you have monitors with bad EDID uh, data. Um. We don't know for sure, either a power surge hit the monitor, and the monitor messed his video card up, or the video card tore the monitor up, or it's a possibility that the DVI cable that was uh, the original first problem could have shorted contacts or the wires inside, and that could have messed up the uh, EEPROM on here and his video card. There's really no way to tell. So, But you're not going to source a, a board for this, I don't think. It's too old to get a source 
you know, board. And I don't really know of any good way to go about writing a new updated EDI information to it. And you can't really take the analog data. The analog driver will work because it has the correct timing, but you couldn't create a dump of the analog EDI information and upload it to the DVI EDI information because it's two separate chips. So that would be bad to upload an analog an analog configuration to a digital side of the monitor. So but anyway, that works. This will restore this monitor, at least in native mode. In other modes it may not look too great, but for native resolution it it works fine. Everything's all nice and crisp. Text all looks good. Windows 10 and their damn shovelware that Microsoft shovels on everybody. So Alright, this video is going on too long. Catch you all in the next one. And I almost forgot as I wrap this up. Um, once you've got the driver installed in Windows in the uh, in the disabled uh, driver enforcement mode, um, once the driver is installed and you get your resolution and all that set, you can reboot back into regular mode and it should work just fine. Alright, now we're really done.